Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. It's only me again and we're out doing some more metal detecting. So today I'm actually on one of Sam's permissions. You must remember Sam from one of my previous videos, Mr Tweed. He's kindly invited me onto one of his permissions. So we've come out for the day in glorious sunshine, beautiful weather, the birds are singing, we're close to a river. Fingers crossed we actually get something good. Now Sam has got something really interesting to show you guys as well on this video. It's something he found very recently when he went out detecting on his own on another permission and he's brought it along today especially to show you guys. It is a truly magnificent find, a true bucket lister. So stay tuned for this video because trust me you're gonna want to see that one. That just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching my videos as always if you do like this video don't forget to hit a thumbs up that way I'll know to come back to this permission if Sam lets me and then obviously we can do some more stuff here and again if you do like the video please hit subscribe that just means that you're not going to miss a single video that gets uploaded bearing in mind videos are going to be coming thick and fast at the moment every week for you guys to enjoy so anyway, that's enough talking. We've got lots of digging ahead of us today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the first hole. Okay guys, so as promised, before we set up today, I'm just going to go over and see uh, Mr Tweed and he's got something really, really special to show us. Now I've seen this before and uh, I was totally gobsmacked when he showed it to me and um, yeah, I think he's still pretty gobsmacked about it now. So it's a really, really cool find, a true bucket lister. Um, here we go, here's Mr Tweed, how are you doing? Yeah, all right, I'm still buzzed about finding this to be honest and I didn't think I'd ever be I'd ever be holding something quite as, you know, I don't even know what word to use. I'm just going to show it to you, to be honest. There you go. Wow, look at that. That right there is a third century gold intaglio ring. A Roman gold. So you, Roman gold. You must have just been absolutely amazed when you found that. I mean, that is... That is a find of a lifetime. That's People a find of a hundred lifetimes, isn't it? Very rarely get to see that. Can we see the side of it and stuff like that as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So Look it's not quite that. circle. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm told that this would have been worn on a man's finger, a little finger, on the last knuckle. So it won't quite fit me. I'm not going to try and shove it on because we all know how that'll end. Yeah. But. That would have been worn by someone incredibly high status, um, maybe a you know a royalty or a high status military officer, someone with a lot of money and a lot of power and influence. And it it was found in the corner of a field that I'd done a hundred times. I know you hear it all the time, but so I'm walking across detecting towards me bag as as you do, and I got a signal and I think, hang on a minute, I've I've gridded this area, I've I've done this area to death. Um, turns out I hadn't. I dug the hole and I found a button. Oh, okay, button. Not very exciting, but I've obviously missed that. What else have I missed? So another 10 yards of zigzagging around this corner, walking to me bag, and another very, very faint signal. And this time it's a, a little Charles I hammered penny that has been folded over. Um, again, I could have missed that quite easily, but I've still missed it. So. Uh, I spend another five minutes in this corner just zigzagging round, making sure, you know, I really haven't missed anything at all and I get a lovely signal. Um, if I remember rightly, it was 82, 83 on the day S2. Dug it up, expecting it to be, you know, a ring pull or something. And, uh, it, well, I, I just, I, could, I, could, I couldn't believe it when this, I saw this in the bottom of the hole. It just crumbled away from the soil because the soil was so dry and, yeah, I, I, well, I sent you a photo, didn't I, Michael? And I said, I think I found a Tudor ring. Certainly Think, did. Thinking it's Tudor because there's, well, it wouldn't <laughs> be Roman. Of course, why would it be Roman here? Um, and there's so much Tudor stuff. Uh, it, it must be Tudor. And you said, no, mate, I think that's, I think that's Roman. And um, 
I just wanted to show everybody what an amazing find that Sam had recently and uh, just to say that it's possible it's out there um, you know you've just got to again put the time in put the hours in and get out there do detecting Nate and and you, yeah. you know stuff like that comes up because you weren't expecting it to come out of the ground and never especially where you were detecting is yeah you know, honestly, I can't stress enough people say it all the time and it, I know it gets old somewhere is never really detected that I had gridded that corner of the field you know the grass was wet um, in the past I've gridded it I I'd gone up and down following my footprints I've swung low and slow and I, there's no way in hell I could have missed anything but I did I did I missed well, a button a hammered and a flipping room and gold rig so your land's never done ever 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 So it's not the cleanest signal this one guys, but it's coming in at around the late 70s, jumping around a little bit between 71, 76. Obviously we're quite close to this, uh, this little lookout tower type building. Could possibly be a bit of modern junk, but we aren't gonna know until we dig it out of the ground. Let's give it a go. There we go. That explains why it was uh, a bit of an iffy signal, because it's actually just an old uh, shotgun cap, unfortunately. But uh, hey-ho, we'll move on. Hopefully we'll get something a bit better. Okay, so I've just had a really interesting little target down here. It's actually a button, so uh, it looks like it's a military button possibly from the 1800s, maybe late 1700s. Um, it's gold gilded, this button, on the front, which means it was definitely meant for show or parade. And on the front of the button, you can see this sort of lion standing up. Um, it's got to be identifiable, this button, although I wouldn't know any sort of military history off the top of my head, so I would have to do a bit of research on this one. However, we did find it quite close proximity to the lookout tower there. And that lookout tower is essentially just sort of overlooking the estuary coming in. So it would have had some sort of military purpose, I would imagine, just to guard what's coming in and what's coming out. And maybe some sort of early warning defence system as well. So there's a potential that this button could date whoever was here or stationed here at this uh, lookout point. Um, so it'll be really interesting to get a date for this one. But there we are guys, just a nice military button. Let's push on, see what else we get. Okay, so I've just had another really interesting little find. It's uh, another button. This one's not gold gilded, it's actually washed with silver on the front, but I'm pretty sure it's another military-esque button. Now whether this is a regimental button or a naval button, again, I'm not too sure. I'm not very good on that type of history. But it's uh, certainly very interesting and it can date who was here or certainly stationed here um, and at what time period this particular, you know, sort of feature or field was being used too. So not only are they quite nice to look at these buttons, but they also give you a lot of information about the place where you're detecting because obviously you know that there was a lot of activity around here during the time that this button was obviously being used by a soldier uh, or a sailor or something like that. So there we are guys, another button. Still got a lot of time to go, so hopefully we'll get some more goodies and I'll keep you posted. See you on the next one. Ah, how cool. So I actually know what this, um, this target is. This is actually uh, an old barrel tap. And um, these were used quite heavily in the 1800s, but they have been known to be used in the 16 and 1700s as well. I've never found one this small. This is actually a really, really small little barrel tap. And essentially, um, it would have just been used as a mechanism to release liquid from a barrel or a container. And there would have been a screw uh, cap at the top here, which would have obviously released the water, and then you could have turned it to stop it. But yeah, these are really nice little items, actually. And they don't come up very often, and they're made of uh, solid brass. 
So yeah, there's that one. Again, probably a similar date to the buttons that I've been finding as well. But um, yeah, I'm really interested to see what else we can pull out of this field today. So there we are guys, a lovely little barrel tap. Let's uh, crack on. So I've just had a really interesting little find here. Now, on first inspections, it looks like some type of lever mount, but it's quite a decorative one. And I think it's possible that it might have even been silver washed at some stage too. So um, you can see the pins on the back. Now I'm pretty sure those pins are what would have sort of held it to the leather. Um, but then it's got this sort of protruding bit at the top here as well. So I'm not really too sure. It's got these uh, two circles in either side. That's obviously what would have held it onto something. And then this sort of pin at the bottom. So I'm in two minds about this really. Uh, do I think it's old? It could potentially be old. It's made of bronze, so uh, it is a solid bronze item. But how old is it? I don't know. I don't know. It could be 16th century could be relatively modern could be relatively old but I'll have to do a little bit more research about this one and see if I can find out any more information about it but I'll show Sam in a bit and see what he thinks see if he's found anything similar around here as well but there we are guys a really interesting little mount type thing We've got a really nice sort of uh, 79, 83, 85, something like that. Quite a small target, but that one's got to be worth the dig, isn't it? Again, quite close to this little lookout shelter. Let's give it a go. Okay, unfortunately guys, this one is just a piece of uh, scrap lead. But, oh well, could have been anything. You've got to dig them, you've got to see what's in there. Let's push on. Okay guys, so when we came into the field this morning, the landowner told us about this interesting feature that he always knew was in his fields, but he recently had cleared all the brush and the brambles around it. Um, and he said that, uh, yeah, he's never really been able to see it in this much detail before. He always knew it as a lookout tower. Now it is on old maps dating back to the sort of 1800s, so it does go back a couple of hundred years, but nobody is really too sure as to how old it is. Now personally, um, just based on its construction, it's made of local limestone with limestone mortar. Now this is very, very typical of sort of 1800s local cottages and stone walls and things like that. So I don't think it's tremendously old, but it's certainly a very, very cool little structure. The other thing to note as well is that uh, behind here is the river and essentially inside of here there were some windows and the windows gave you three different points out to the local river. This river would have been the main highway route for goods trading in and out of this particular area so it would have been really important especially during times of war and unsettled times to make sure that you know what's coming in and up that river channel and highway um, is either meant to be there and it's not a threat. So I'm pretty sure there was quite a few of these dotted around and we're obviously quite lucky to find one in this particular field on this permission. And the tree in front is obviously a really, really tall beech tree. The beech tree's got to be about two, three hundred years old and obviously the window that was looking out here to the river is now obstructed by this tree. So what that can actually tell you is that this must have been built way before that big beech tree because otherwise there was no point in having a lookout all you're going to be able to see is obviously leaves and a massive tree trunk so it's got to be at least two to three hundred years old and obviously our job is to try and find out as much about it as we can based on the things that we pull out of the ground that are metal that we can hopefully date and then we can take it back to the landowner and say we found these potentially this was being used around that time
Okay guys, so just had a really banging target down here. Uh, it's coming in around sort of 92, 94, really clean, sweet tone. It was going to be digged any day of the week. Um, glad I did because I've just pulled out a really nice silver shilling. Uh, it's not an incredibly old one. This one is dated 1927, uh, but it's still a silver coin. Um, not 100% silver, so it's not 925 silver. A little bit of cupra nickel mixed in with this one. Um, but still probably find of the day so far. So pretty chuffed with that. First silver coin of the day, nice silver shilling. Let's see what else comes out. So this is quite an interesting little find. Um, it appears to be just a normal sort of bronze ring, nothing special. But what's interesting about this is that it is bronze and you don't usually find rings like this that are made of bronze usually they are made of iron because it's a much cheaper more modern material to use but this one is definitely bronze looks like it was very very shiny at some point um, is it old I don't I don't think it is to be honest could could be a curtain hook something like that but it could obviously have some age to it but I'm not 100% sure if anybody out there can possibly help out with this one then that would be much appreciated but there we are guys just a a lovely bronze ring. Okay, so I've just had a really interesting little signal down here. It's the afternoon now. We've actually stopped and had a bit of lunch and uh, came back into the field, started on the other side of the field. And I had this just absolutely textbook sort of uh, 86, 87 target. Dug down, wasn't very deep, probably about three to four inches. And lo and behold, this lovely silver coin pops out. The problem is, is it has been rubbed completely smooth on both sides and there is no detail left on it at all. We're in two minds as to whether or not it's a hammered or whether it's a milled coin, but it's most certainly silver, definitely 925 silver. Do we know the age of this coin? Not really, there's not a lot we can really tell from it. One thing it does tell us is that there's silver coins here and there was people here. So that's obviously a plus, but you know, regardless, obviously if this did have detail on, it would have been a really, really nice coin and definitely find of the day. But unfortunately, this one looks like it was possibly in the run up to be a love token and unfortunately now has no detail on it whatsoever. But there we go, still a lovely silver coin. Let's crack on, see what else comes out. There we go guys, so just thought I'd show you this one very quickly. Just pulled out a lovely little 1930 penny, fresh out of the ground. Um, nice patina, absolutely lovely patina. But it's obviously a relatively modern coin and on the back of it, unfortunately, it's a little bit more crusty. That's probably where it's been lying in the soil a little bit longer. But there we go, a nice 1930 one penny. Let's move on. Okay, so I've had uh, another target. This is a brass uh, plate. Could possibly be hmm, off of a bit of machinery. Could be off of a, a book or something like that. Um, but potentially it's just a horse brass, but there might be the potential of it being a little bit more than that. It does have some sort of inscription on the front of it. Uh, I can't really tell what it is. It doesn't look like your sort of stereotypical copper plate italic writing. Uh, but is it letters? Is it um, a picture? Your guess is as good as mine. But it's got to be at least a hundred years old that. And judging how deep it was in the ground, could even be even older. So there we go guys, there's that one. Let's push on, we've got about an hour or so left. Fingers crossed we get some good stuff. Okay guys, so it's that time. We're gonna catch up with Mr. Tweed and see what he's found today. Any gold Roman rings today, Mr. Tweed? Oh, millions. I, oh. I, I'm about to start chucking them in the hedge. Could they have uh, so Coca-Cola written on them? Yeah, Budweiser. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're the good ones. <laughs> what have you had today, mate? It's not a lot. Um, you know, not all is lost. 
across over there. There's, you know, there's, there's been a, a few nice bits and pieces come up. Okay. Like a nice fragment of a, of a, of a sort of post-medieval buckle. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Um, there's this, which we think might be, um, who, who did we think it was? Uh, George II, wasn't it? I think Possibly. so. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's a forgery silver coin, most likely, isn't it? So it's yes. not really. Is anything. it silvered on the other side? Yeah, it's there it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, possibly, possibly a silvered um, imitation coin that one, which is quite rare in its own right, to be honest with you, mate. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite happy with that. And then, nice big horse brass, nothing on it, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Cool. And <laughs> buckle fragment. Um, yeah, a few buttons and a J. <laughs> a J, so that's a pendant, isn't it? Mm. Um, yeah, it would have been really decorative at one point, that pendant. And obviously it's got a tiny, tiny little loop at the top as well. God knows how that's not broken yet. <laughs> it's incredible, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. obviously they lost it, but they didn't lose it from the broken loop. They must have lost it from the broken yeah. chain. Yeah, so maybe there's a gold chain floating around somewhere. Yeah, I doubt that, mate. We can hope, can't we? We can only hope. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, guys, and there we have it. It's the end of another day, thus the end of another metal detecting video. It's been a pretty good day. I mean, you know, we haven't had an abundance of great finds and lots of, you know, really interesting stuff. Certainly no gold Roman ring. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've had some nice bits. As I said, the hammered coin that I had that was quite worn... Um, as well as that interesting mount as well. So definitely a lot of potential in this uh, particular area. And a huge thanks to Sam, Mr. Tweed, for asking me to come out and his permission. It's been a great day in the sunshine, although it's been a little bit cloudy now, but that's probably good because that'll cool us down a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed the video today. And as always, if you do like it and you want to see some more, hit the subscribe button. It's completely free. It's not going to take any money from your bank account. It just means that you'll be notified every time that I upload a video. And of course, if you like the permission and you want us to come back to see what else we can find, hit a thumbs up as well. That leaves me to say thank you again. And until the next time, guys, happy hunting. See you on the next dig.